we're gonna do this as quickly as humanly possible. Are you ready? Okay, doesn't matter because we're doing it. All right, at this point, I need everyone quiet because I'm recording this for people who aren't here for when I'm gone next week. Uh, so that includes Pottery Kids No Talking, please. All right, so we have at this point, I've demoed how to assemble your pieces, how to smooth your pieces, how to draw where you're going to add things, how to attach a neck. We've talked about plumping up your shape. Yeah. Indigo, while I'm teaching, can you please go get yours? Thank you. I want to put it in the video because it's so good. Okay. Now, I've also shown you guys how to create a stilt that will keep your piece in the position that you need it to be in so that you can build your legs. Now, if you look here, imagine that this is the board and you can see it this direction. You guys see this? Those are some big old legs. Okay. So if that's too high, you might need to like cut some of this off. Uh, will you open it up and just stick it over there? Yeah. Like right here. Okay. So maybe this is more of an accurate height for my piece. Okay. You want to put it in the position that it is going to be when you do precarious parts. Everybody feeling me? Okay. Now, when you build your precarious parts, Depends on what kind of part you got going. I'm going to show you how to do a few. If your piece is wildly bigger than your thumb, then those need to be pinch pops. Okay, so if it is like a ginormous back leg, does that make sense? If I want to make like a big chubby butt and a big chubby back thigh right here, I'd probably do a pinch pot and stick it on there. Everybody feeling me? But what we're talking about is the more skinny parts. Okay, if you have a part like maybe I want to make really big front legs right here. First thing is, is if your two front legs are going to be the same, I would start by starting with the exact amount of clay that's the same. If you start with the same amount of clay, you'll be more likely to end up with two legs that are the same size and shape. Everybody feeling me? Okay, so and your back legs are probably going to, in my case, need more clay because it's going to have that big tushy on it. Everybody feeling me? So these are going to be my front legs. Now what I'm going to do is I want more clay that I'm going to need. Okay? And here's why. I am going to build these solid. Okay? These are going to be solid. But what I want to do is I want to leave a built-in band-aid. A really chubby part here that's going to stay wet. Everybody see that? That is going to be the area where I squish it into the body. It's going to be a built-in band-aid. This is not part of my leg. My leg is going to begin below that line. Everybody see that? This is a band-aid, not a leg. Everybody following so far? Okay. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm just going to start squishing and forming my leg. Now it is a good idea to build it all in one piece. Like if you decide, oh, I didn't have quite enough to make my leg <laughs> and you decide to slip and score on a piece, that's more likely to break off. Does that make sense to everybody? So I do recommend that you, and it's going to take you a few trial and errors. You've never done this before. Does this look like a leg? That looks like a really awful leg. That doesn't look like anything that would come out of any kind of creature. Okay, so I'm really, and I'm not going to do it right now for the sake of time, but I'm going to take the time to really form and like make a knee and like put a cap on the back and like put like a really awesome, and I'm going to build this thing right here 100% done. I'm going to sculpt in the muscle. I'm going to put in all the details of that knee. I'm going to make sure and use whatever tools I've got to make sure that this is exactly how I want it. So if it's not how I want it, I might scrape some away. I might, I'm forming and I'm building and I'm being accurate right now. Because what we're gonna do is let's say that this is my leg. Can we all pretend that this is a glorious leg? Okay, this is not a glorious leg, but let's pretend. Everybody follow me? What you're going to do is you're gonna take a little piece of your bag and you're gonna take rip a piece of it off and you're going to spray, spray, spray this thing. Okay? And what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to just cover, notice I'm going right to that line that I drew the band-aid at, okay? The plastic is not going any lower. I am just going to preserve this wet clay at the very, at the band-aid. That is going to remain wet. Everybody feeling me? Now, is this thinner or skinnier than my thumb? This is not gonna, this is not thin enough. So I'd have to keep molding this. It has to get thinner than your thumb. If for some reason your pot does not get thinner than your thumb, once this has set up a wee bit, I would leave it at night. And when you come, you're gonna still bag this. Does that make sense to everybody? But you're gonna keep this extra wet. So it's gonna be out of the bed squishy wet. Does that make sense? And then we're trying to allow this to set up to be close to leather hard, but not really. Everybody following me? So let's pretend that I bagged this tonight with my piece really tight. And the next day I came in, it was a little bit firmer. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an X-Acto blade, something sharp, and I'm gonna cut this in half. And then I'm going to use a trimming tool to hollow it out. Where's my trimming tools? This will work. I would use the round ones. This is a square one, but you can just kind of dig a hole inside of here and make that hollow. Everybody see now? So now my leg is hollow. And then I will also, I don't probably need to, well, maybe a little bit of that. So I'm going to dig this down in and your clay will be a little bit firmer. So you might have to give it a little bit more oomph. But because it will be set up a night, it'll be a little bit firmer than mine is right now. Everybody see how mine's like seriously like a problem. Now before I finish, I'm thinking about where this is going to attach and I'm going to put this back together. But I have to have an air valve to allow that air to come out. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, because if I squish all this clay into the body, this air is going to be trapped inside of the leg. Everybody feeling me? So you could fix this two ways. You could put a hole and hope that you don't squish clay in that hole where you attach it. But what I would probably do is right before I attach this, let's go ahead and slip and score this back together. You're going to slip. Everybody imagine I'm using slip right now. Is everybody imagining? Yes. I'm imagining slip is on there and then I squish it back together uh, with all that slip and if I need to I put a band-aid on it and then I carve that band-aid away so you never knew that I opened it up and put it back together now I have a hollow leg is everybody clear on that okay so what I would do is when this is like close to leather hard I would stab this through the bottom because nobody's gonna see the bottom okay and so that's going to be fine. It went and it released that air out of there. Everybody following me? Okay. Now, this is set up. It's close to leather hard because I let it set up a night. Everybody feeling me? But in this area, it's so squishy and wet. Okay. Now, you have to pretend that I've done this to two different legs. Okay. Because this isn't going to work if I don't have two legs. i got to have it all ready to go. At least the front two. Everybody feeling me? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter my saddle so that I'm going to alter my saddle so that I've got space here to attach my front legs. See how now my saddle's just on the booty? Everybody see that? I'm going to get the angle that I want. I'm positioning it how I want. <laughs> okay, that was a really big leg. Okay. Anyway, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this a little bit shorter. I'm going to make a place right here. And this is the point right here. If you wanted to go and put a hole into the body so you didn't have a hole on here, you want to squish it where it's going to go. And you're going to draw where it's going to attach. A little wet today, y'all. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hole right here, fairly large. I have to have enough space here to actually attach it. Okay, so I'm going to attach right here. So I'm score slip scoring. Everybody use your imagination. I'm adding slip right now. Do you everybody see it? Whoa. I know, right? Squishy. It's so wet and so squishy. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going, I could do it this way. If you didn't do it through the foot, you could also connect those two holes so that that hole goes all the way through. Everybody feeling me? So, but you want to make sure that this wet clay that you've got at the top doesn't squish down and close that hole. Okay, and you want to make sure that these two holes match up, which they will. Okay, so now I'm going to squish this on there. I'm going to score, slip, score all this extra clay. And anywhere I squish the clay, I want to slip. So I'll slip, everybody see the slip? Slippy, 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 slippy. Everybody see that? Okay. I score it again. Now this extra stuff here, when you have a leg, think about your butt, okay? When your leg is attached to your torso, it's got muscle there. Everybody feeling me? So this, it looks like it's ridiculous right here, but it's actually a gift. You can build the muscle right now, okay? So I'm gonna kind of squish this clay up into this part and make it look oh so nice and fresh, okay? If I don't have enough, I can use a little band-aid that didn't have enough right there. And so if my built-in band-aid wasn't quite enough, I can add a little bit more. You need to get rid of your seam everywhere and clean this up, okay? And now, I should be able, <laughs> this is such a weird shaped thing, to stick this on my saddle while I do the same thing for the other leg. Everybody feeling me? Does everybody see it? Do you get it? Do you understand it? Now, I would attach two legs at a time because you want those to set up before you do the back ones, okay? You want to have this saddle under there so that they become one. You're training it to be able to take that shape. Now, when I did, when I did the pander, or when I did my hamper wolf here, I built it so that um, the belly took the floor. Everybody see how the belly sits on the floor? But I also kept just a little stilt of clay here to support the tail end while I attach the legs. Now everybody see how these legs, are, like I've actually sculpted these to be nice? That's what I'm talking about. All of this was wet, okay? This was the part that I kept firm and stiff. For this, all of this was wet, that's my muscle there, and all of this was firm and stiff. Everybody get me? And I decided to put my holes in my piece when I attached them so that you couldn't see it on the toes. But sometimes that doesn't work, so I wanted to show you both ways. How many of you guys understand how to do legs or supporting the parts that are supporting? Now, if it was me, and I, you know, I'm still worried about these legs. Let's pretend for a second that I attached four legs and it looked amazing and it was actually sitting up. I would make a wee bitty skinny, wee bitty little saddle just for in the middle, just to help it keep its shape. I would put it underneath here, nice and firm on the bottom. I'd squish it in between all of the legs and I'd squeeze it up there so that it's extra safe and secure while those legs are setting up. Does everybody see that? Okay, and eventually you'll take the saddle out and it'll pop right back out. Now I need to show you one more way to make precarious parts today. You guys are being amazing, okay? The other things, how many of you guys aren't doing legs, but you are doing corns or big ears or spikes that are sticking off? Those ones in some ways can be more difficult because this one's going straight up and down and it's not defying gravity. Everybody put your arms straight up in the air you like straight up you could keep them up like that a lot longer than if you go out 40 degrees do you guys feel that gravity on you that gravity right there and then if you go out 90 degrees dude you can feel that you know that like story where like moses had to keep his arm up and he couldn't do it and he had to have air and help him like he couldn't do it it takes it's too difficult you're defying gravity so we have to build something a support system so let's say 
let's say that I'm making a horn. Everybody see my brilliant horn. Wow. This Whoa. part, I know, right? Isn't that glorious? Yeah. So smooth and refreshing. It's glorious. Once I've got it exactly how I want it, just like this, you guys. It's gorgeous. It's smooth. It's detailed. It's got ridges in it. I've carved in details. It's glorious. Okay? I'm going to spray the end, the built-in Band-Aid, which is right here. I'm going to let the gloriousness of this set up a night. And then I'm going to come back the next day. I'm going to unwrap the wet part. I'm going to do the exact same thing. This should be thinner than my, everybody pretend this is thinner than my thumb. Okay? So there's the glory of my glory. Okay? Now, if I'm going to stick it right here, I'll score. Everybody imagine me score <laughs> slip scoring. Everybody see it? Did you see the slip? Everybody see the slip right there? Okay. I'm going to stick it on. Now, this has set up. I know, right? It's gorgeous. Okay? Just in case you wanted to get the full print on. Okay? It's gorgeous. All right? Now, what's going to happen to this piece tonight when I bag it and let it sit up? This is going to start slumping and it's going to want to crack at my joining. Or if my joining is really good, it might crack right here at this U bend. Okay? No bueno. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a ginormous stilt and it has to be wide at the base and I'm just going to squish, squish, squish until I get up there and I need more clay to make this happen. But eventually, oops, I'll get it there and that will be safe and secure. Does that make sense to everybody? When you bag something like this, you have to be very, very careful. Okay? You And when you're moving, you guys have to tuck in your chairs because everybody's going to be moving around with a huge precarious monster that's teetering on half wet legs. Okay? So you want to have like one hand under your board, one hand holding it as you maneuver around the room and watch out for people squishing out their chairs. Uh, you guys, one, one, this, this girl had worked like two months on this amazing huge animal sculpture and a kid she was going behind to put her piece over on the shelf, and the kid squished out really fast on their on their chair, knocked the whole thing off, and she just fell to the floor in tears. It also happened last year too. Okay, was it you? No. Okay. Yeah, you you dropped something last year. It was a pot. Okay. So it happens. So watch your surroundings. These are really really breakable. Everybody feeling me? How many of you guys feel like you are now, this is crucial. You cannot add parts until they're done. You've got to sculpt them and mold them and make them glorious, okay? And then attach them. Now, I want to show you something that looks more glorious than my glory, and that is sweet indigos, okay? So look at indigo's nice little stilt for the booty, and look at that awesome head. See how this head is getting so much detail? Is it? Can you guys see it? Focus. Look at that. Okay? Indigo is going to continue putting so much detail on this entire piece and it's not even going to build the legs until this entire piece has all the sculpting, all of the adding, all of the carving, all of the texture, all of the wrinkles, all of the feathers. Everything that Indigo wants to do to this needs to be done before you add precarious parts. Is that clear to everybody? So this level of detail that she's getting in here is awesome, okay? Because imagine you have all these precarious parts sticking off in different directions, how difficult it's going to be to get your tools inside of those horns and those ears and those fangs. Everybody see how you want to start with the biggest parts and then work to the smallest parts? Okay, how many of you guys feel like you're prepared to do this without me next week? Okay, how many of you are a little hesitant? It makes you a little nervous knowing I'm not going to be here. So I want you to look around at your tables and see who you could help. Okay, who could help you. All right, that is the end of the demo. Indigo, come get your awesome piece, and you guys can go ahead and get your workout. Your hair looks glorious. <laughs> All right, let me um, switch gears here. Get out of your way. That's your stuff. Why don't you grab that chair and come right over here. I'm going to show you.